Hello, this is John at the Home Caregiving Channel. Okay, we're starting off today. We started off with the 2KR. We started with uh, research. Then we went to pain care. Now, we're talking about trips to the hospital. <sighs> trips to the hospital can be good or bad. In my program that I want to give free to uh, societies, free to 200 in each state, called a 911 packet. I invented this packet and it gets you through intake fast and into a bed that fast. It also it also goes into the system. Your 911 packet goes into the system of the hospital. The doctor can see it. The pharmacist can see it. The psychiatrist can see it. The chaplain can see it. The, uh, I mean, just the whole, the charge nurse can see it. The doctor can see, well, if she has AMS. I don't need to test for illness. Well, she's this weight and she's got this illness. A pharmacist can say she needs this drug. You see what I'm saying? It all works together. I've found that the 911 packet is really good, and you can get it if you email me. Tell me if you're in a society and what society or what state you're, you're in at agapes59 at yahoo.com. I'll put that in the description and let you know. So we're talking about hospital trips. Oh, bye, oh, bye, oh, bye. There was a, this is what I had to do. My wife was in the living room. She couldn't do anything for herself. So I would put pants on her. I'd put a top on her, put shoes on her. I would stand her up and put her in a scooter. I'd go out my back door, go down the ramp. To my HHR, I'd open up my HHR passenger door. I would stand my wife up into on the ground and put her into the seat, put the seatbelt on. I'd go back to HHR and I would break down the scooter, throw it all in the back. Then I'd get in the driver's seat and take off. I was going off to Dallas, uh, UT Southwestern. Five o'clock in the morning. I was thinking, oh, it wasn't just there by six. We got there by six, and we were waiting in the front side of it, and all these people started walking up around me. Then a doctor came out and said, we don't have any beds. Now, 24 years in the system, prison, I can blow up. I didn't blow up because I figured uh, be against six or seven of them. So I got mad and picked my wife up and walked out the front door. Then I called the doctors and I talked to the uh, assistant to the doctor. I said, I want to talk to the doctor. She says, I hope you do. I said, he knew at six o'clock in the morning there was no beds. Why was I not communicated to? It's a lot to get her out to the doctor. And uh, I got hold of that doctor from downtown Dallas to my home. I pushed him out. I did. I told him, this is what I told you, what I had to do, get her, her out the door. I didn't do the same thing to get her back in the door. Hospital trips. I went to a hospital 24 miles away. And we sat, and we sat, and we sat, and we sat, and we sat there all day. And then they called her name. So we went up front. 
They put us in the back, put her on a gurney, and we sat, and we sat, and we sat, and we sat. Like 12 hours later, the doctor comes out. He's got a little pill, white pill box, pill cup, and uh, he's got a half glass of water. He comes up to us and says, there's absolutely nothing I can do for you. Here's a cup of Tylenol. Here's some water. Sir, please take her home. What? <laughs> All the way home, I thought, oh my God, I can't even take her to the hospital anymore. Now, that's a wrong statement. You still can if they have the flu, if they have a sore that needs to take care of, if they have pneumonia, you sure take them to the hospital. But their illness, they go, do you like I did me? Let you be there all day, nine to nine, until you have absolutely nothing they can do for you. That's where most caregivers are. Well, the doctor says, there's absolutely nothing I can do for you. What are you going to do at that state bed? What's the questions that come into your mind? Man, it flooded my mind. What do I do? I got home and put her up in bed and I realized... That's when caregiving starts heavy and hot. Caregiving started at the diagnosis. You got prepared by understanding the 2KR, about how to understand pain in your life. And now you're doing hospital trip after hospital trip. And finally, you come to the point where... Caregiving comes hot and heavy. That's where that grinder starts grinding you into non existence. But you're always from there. You're always from there. But that's when caregiving really starts hot and heavy. And it stays hot and heavy to the end of it. And seven years, and you're at two years, three years, and you got a total of seven to do? Man, it's boring. And the best advice I can give you is, it is, is what it is. You got to take care of yourself. I didn't. It almost killed me. I now understand. Why? You hear an old person die because of illness, and then the husband or the wife dies two weeks later because they took care of them. That's what I'm talking about. That's in continuous care. We're in caring mode right now. And the hot and heavy started. When you're all your own because of the 2KR. Who are you going to call for help? No one. No one. You better understand your research. You better understand how to do pain. You better understand there's going to be a day where it's on and it don't stop until they pass. You get mad? Go outside and work it off. Go do some jumping jacks or something. Okay? Get that madness out of you. I'm going to tell you what that brings on in another video. And it could bring prison time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Understand as you're running right to the hospital, as you call an ambulance, as you go out the door and ride in the ambulance, over and over and over and over there comes a time when a doctor will say to you, there's absolutely nothing I can do for you. And when that is said, 
that is where your environment gets hot and heavy. That's where you start. I really want you to be prepared. I really want you to share these videos. I really want you to help me get my ministry going. Because when it gets hot and heavy, I want the church to bring two volunteers into your hospice home and do the housework. You know, the caregivers, they ain't got time for housework. They don't have the energy for housework. So hold on, I'm trying to get this going for you. I really am. I'm trying to equip you as caregivers. These videos are a good start. Watch them. Understand. Take notes. Take notes. Because when caregiving starts hot and heavy, that's when I hope you are ready. In your mind, in your body, and your soul. That's when your friends say goodbye. That's when the church, you can't make it to church anymore. That's where you are. At the impossible moment, a doctor says, oh, there's absolutely nothing I can do for you. That's where you are. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you you make it through it. I'm trying to tell you you can do better than what I did. I'm trying to tell you there's a way to do it where you ain't so cotton pick and drained. Where the grinder doesn't get you all grinded down. You know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> I had to tell that to you because it's going to come. It's going to come. It will come. And what are you going to do when it comes? I was in a caregiving group on the internet. This woman screamed out, I'm not called to do this. <laughs> she wanted out. She wanted out. She wanted no part of that. God bless you. Keep on watching these videos that help you. I am trying to help you because I went before you and it was me. It was twisted. It was washed up, sucked through, beat up. Whatever you want to call it. Watch out for PTSD. I truly believe it. That I got in some of that. So enjoy. <laughs> we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.